home uh, being valued at $450,000. We want to look at the impact on the tax rate, the tax bill, the tax bill comparison, <coughs> and the override tax increase. And we'll look at the uh, projected tax rates. Uh, our current, uh, our FY 2007 tax rate is $10.82. And as you might uh, realize that the tax rate is not representative of your tax bill directly. If you went back and looked at our tax rate from 2001, 2, 3 going up, you find that it was much higher back in 2001, I believe. And it, and it came down and then went up slightly in 2007. And the reason for that is that the valuation of your property has gone up. And therefore, a lower tax rate still generates the required revenue. Uh, the good news about the tax rate coming down means that you've got a gain in your property tax. So the fact that tax rate went down doesn't mean that you sh didn't shell out more money. It just means that your property value went up, and uh, as a result, you had a lower tax rate, but you still paid more money. Well, since I can't predict what the assessors are going to assess our property in 2008, 2009, 2010, and I suspect that the property value is based on uh, the housing market may have gone down a little bit, and to, uh, will have gone down for 2008, meaning the tax rate is going to go up. Uh, I'm using the $10.82 as a baseline. And from that, you can actually calculate <coughs> what it would cost you as you go forward with e each of the years. So you can see that if we were using the same basis, in other words, no change in valuation, right? In 2008, uh, a no override uh, budget would, uh, tax rate would go to $11.57. <coughs> you can calculate based on what your current uh, uh, tax bill is, you can actually figure out what your tax bill would be in each of the following years. Now the dark blue represents no override. So without an override, you're still going to have a tax increase. But I'm going to focus uh, the next slide on the cost of the override, and only the cost of the override. And this is what it looks like. For an average home owner, uh, an average home of uh, $450,000 assessed value, the FY in 2008, increase in taxes would be $255.48, the cost of this override question. In 2009, and by the way, that would be if it was a one-year override or a three-year override. In FY 2009, it would be an additional cost of $256. And then in FY 2010, the uh, override cost would be $124.28. And this is for an average home of $450,000, as I said. Uh, keep in mind that that's on top of you know, our annual tax increase in a non-override situation. Uh, if you look at it from uh, your overall tax bill on, on a given year, what you're going to see is that uh, what you see here is this This is the non-override portion of your tax bill. So for a home <coughs> owner that paid $4,869 uh, $4, in taxes, the override, uh, the non-override amount would have, uh, is an increase of uh, uh, about 300, almost $350 before the override. And, and that increase is primarily related to the Batchelder School and police station, some of the permanent bonding kicking in this year, which uh, causes a jump in uh, uh, override uh, debt that we've already voted. And then on top of it, there would be the $255.48 uh, increase as a result of an override. And the following year, you can see the tax, uh, you know, the tax base going up, and the the 512 isn't 512 dollars more. It's it's the difference between the 255 <coughs> and, and the 512. You subtract it out. I showed it to you on on this slide here. It's it's this number. 
and then similarly, on FY 2010, uh, your tax bill as a result of the override would be $636 more than it was the, back in, uh, uh, if you were measuring it against uh, FY 2007. And this is just looking at the, uh, the difference uh, side by side, uh, just another view. kind of wrap things up and open it up to questions, uh, just to talk a little bit about the budget calendar and how this all fits together. On April 2nd, the Board of Selectmen will be uh, meeting, uh, and we will be discussing whether or not to put an override question on the May ballot, and what that override question is. And part of this meeting is all about is to, to get this message out, to get some input, and uh, clearly we will be uh, meeting next Monday, I believe, and uh, again, the following Monday and we'll be discussing this and looking forward to input and ideas associated with dealing <coughs> with what kind of an override question do we put on the uh, May ballot. April 2nd is the deadline for us to make that decision. Now we could also at that time decide not to put a ballot, uh, an override question on the ballot. Wait until we uh, finish our, our April town meeting and then vote to put an override question on at a special election sometime in June. That's another decision the board can make. Uh, <coughs> it's not been discussed at this point. And, uh, and again, uh, the, the rationale to do that might be because of the uncertainty about what state aid might be and what adjustments would be made associated with that and how it might impact uh, an override question or even a three-year override plan. But let me, let me go on. Uh, on the May ballot, would, we would be putting a one-year or three-year, postponing the decision, as I mentioned, uh, until after April town meeting, call for special election. The earliest it could be would be June 5th. Uh, town meeting this year is scheduled for April 9th. It is the board's intention to adjourn after we finish all of the non-financial articles to a date certain, which will be April 30th, to consider the omnibus article. Why are we doing that? We're doing that because the uh, legislature will have, <coughs> House bill would have been uh, voted on just a few days <coughs> before April 30th. So we would then have a better picture of what our state aid is going to be. And we've heard about the governor's budget, uh, but there's still some contention, there's some concern. Uh, the finance team met with uh, Representative Brad Jones a couple weeks ago. His recommendation was that we wait until April 30th and uh, that, uh, you know, he, he led us to believe that we could pretty much be comfortable with the governor's budget number, but there may be some more money out there and that, you know, we might have to work at trying to spring it loose. Uh, and then lastly, uh, uh, as I said, on April 30th, we will consider the omnibus article and other financial articles. I think it's about four or five on the warrant. We've numbered them. They're on the bottom of the warrant. And if required, again, we'll set a date for an override election in June. At this point, I'll open it up to questions, uh, address the questions uh, uh, to the appropriate boards, and uh, hopefully they'll have the answers for you. Thank you. Right here, left, bud. Alan. One thousand, the hundred thousand uh, dollar level one cuts that you anticipate to move to schools. Hundred thousand dollar cuts just to towns, the board. Yes. but you don't identify what those cuts are. I think that would be useful for the town I think people we did. to hear. Well, it's, it's just we did. A, no, you didn't. <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry. Mostly impacts. 
the, the, there was it's no a identification percentage across the board. Yes, the board. but there was no identification of what those cuts were. And I think it would be useful for the townspeople to know what those cuts are. Uh, also, I don't think the presentation looked at the school town needs over the next three years. Although we're talking about a three-year budget, we're really only looking at current concerns, not over the concerns over the next three-year period. Those are your questions. There. I'll try to answer them best I can. Uh, re regarding the hundred thousand dollars, because that guy is causing that. Yes, for Mike. Two mics too close together. Oh. This might be outputting into the room. Oh, so Conflicting mics. Mike, <laughs> Mike, too many mics. <laughs> okay. Is that better? The hundred thousand dollars. The town administrator. Uh, made a cut across the board, and he left it to the department heads to adjust their budgets accordingly. What I do know is that the impact on police, fire, and public works was in the $25,000 range apiece, and uh, I assume that some of it was coming out of overtime, and uh, the rest was going to be left to the department heads uh, to make appropriate adjustments. Why don't we take one question at a time because I, they've gone over my head. What was your second so, question? Joe, you're, you're expecting that to be mostly overtime cuts? Mr. Bellaconis. The, uh, keep in mind the specific cuts were just identified a week ago, and we have a number of municipal departments that are affected. Um, the department heads need an opportunity to go back and assess their departments and determine exactly where those will be cut from, whether they're salary items or wage items. And that exercise has not reached fruition, so we're not there quite yet. However, for um, purposes of, of dollars involved, the, uh, the reduction on the police side is 25586 On the fire department side, it's um, 18394 And for the Department of Public Works, Excluding sanitation, 17,715, and sanitation would be an additional, or trash collection would be an additional 9,214. The other um, budget cuts as they're applied to departments are, are generally in the, in the range under um, $4,000. So those departments will need to go back and identify how they will cut those amounts from their budget. And, and in many instances, there's smaller departments that have uh, mostly salary, so they need to do a little bit of work. Your second question that I recall was related to the uh, percentage of available <coughs> revenue split between schools and municipal government, Alan? It wasn't revenue, it was uh, the uh, fixed expenses. Fixed expenses. Health, you know, benefits, and so okay. forth. Okay. Uh, what I'm looking at a sheet that the finance committee asked to uh, Mike, I think, asked the pink sheet here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and if I read this right, the percentage, a portion of fixed costs. I don't have a percentage, but I'll, I'll read you, for example, the proposed budget, the fixed cost for school was $4,742,310, and for town is $4,017,211. 4 but a piece of that, a bigger piece of that is debt service. It's on the town side. Does that same sheet show mm -hmm. almost mm -hmm. yeah, $3 million uh, proposed? Uh, this is a de a help for health on schools and about $1.2 million on town side? That's correct. So the schools are significantly more? Yes. Oh, yeah. On the fixed benefits. Right. Uh, on, on, in the case on of that, health. On that yeah, piece I'm, of I'm fixed benefits. Make a point. In the case of pensions, it's not the. It's not that case. Right. right. Yeah. We're just trying to make a point because I don't think these numbers have been brought out to the town. That's all. I, I think what's uh, what's interesting, if you look at uh, 
on a sheet. 